Today we're going to review a paper published not long ago that documented an unusual case of cancer immediately after a vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination. And the reason why I wanted to focus on this particular topic is because of uh, the author's review of all literature documenting cancer development after vaccination, after mRNA vaccination, and specifically also what might be the reasons as to why this is actually even being observed. So I thought this was super interesting. And it also supports um, the theory that we, we, I, in conjunction with other scientists, proposed recently and published how mRNA vaccines via their genetic makeup could potentially be contributing to cancer development. All right, my name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Mara Genomics, and let's get going with this. So first of all, there's, like I always like in science papers, there's introduction and introduction provides a really interesting little tidbits of information. And in this paper, the author or authors, I can't remember how many were involved, introduced this doctor, I think her, the name was something like Ute Kruger or something like that. Anyway, the reason why I bring it up is because that doctor apparently introduced the concept of turbo cancers. So she might have coined that term. But the reason why I mentioned this is because this is actually the first, first example of turbo cancers being used in a scientific literature that I'm aware of. And however, when I checked the reference, for, for uh, that the authors use for this doctor when coining this term, it actually wasn't a published paper at all. It was a video interview. So it's somewhat unprofessional to use a video interview as a reference in scientific literature. And by the way, in a pandemic, I'm seeing this trend more frequently. Because, and I, it might be because of the fact that there was such a heavy-handed censorship of uh, what kind of information was allowed to be published in scientific literature that as a consequence it might have actually resulted in this new trend where scientists are using non-scientific references not a professional way to do it but nevertheless i watched the video and the video uh, was uh, very good so worth checking out uh, anyway um, that doctor also mentioned that she suspected that the reason why we are seeing this proliferation of turbo cancers might be because of the spike protein getting inside the nucleus. That's an old story right now. The paper that actually proposed that has been retracted since. I made a video on, on that topic. It is still the biggest, uh, most watched video I ever made. And it really is the video that helped me launch this channel, really. <laughs> But nevertheless, and there's other supporting evidence of the, that suggests that indeed spike protein could be getting inside nucleus, but it's very weak evidence. But nevertheless, you can check out videos uh, of, the, of that evidence because I'm, I made content on that. Then, uh, then we move on to the actual, well, actually, the authors also mentioned, listen, the reason why we don't know anything really is because when the clinical trials were, were done, they were the actual, these gene therapy products, the mRNA, so-called mRNA vaccines, they were never actually investigated for the capacity of, an, of uh, introducing, say, mutations in a genetic content or ability to produce cancers. And furthermore, the clinical trials were ended prematurely because everyone involved in those clinical trials, nearly everyone, was allowed to vaccinate merely a few months after the clinical trials started. And therefore, we cannot actually, we do, cannot measure the long-term consequences of vaccinations, which is how you would potentially be able to start determining whether indeed such a procedure was, uh, was dangerous for cancer development or not. Okay, so that's, that's a problem. And then the authors go on to present the case themselves, which is what spurred um, them producing this article. And they presented a case of a, a young, young woman, 30-year-old woman, who was very healthy and, and um, had an athletic lifestyle. 
and who started to have um, bad symptoms immediately after second, her second shot, a mRNA shot. And the first one was she was fine. After the second one, literally next day, she started to have uh, certain symptoms. The weird one was like this um, neck and jaw lock. She started sweating. She started to have like fever. Um, she, um, she um, I think she like tremors and nausea just not feeling good and that it progressed in, uh, into even worse case scenario and she started to have um, insomnia and hypersensitivity to light and sound so really unusual cases and eventually she was actually diagnosed with um, I think they called it um, precursor B cell um, lymphoma so basically um, cells cells that are precursor b cells and basically those cells were were being um they were they were dividing uncontrollably so um because of that she was treated with chemotherapy and everything worked out just fine for her so that's great but it also then authors decided to see well how common is this and they checked published literature on this topic and basically what they discovered is that there is so far up to that point and this is a recent publication so up to that point of them submitting the paper let's say and that usually uh, can take several months between a, a submission for publication and when the paper is actually finally allowed to be seen so then within probably the first two to three years um, of uh, mass vaccination, 28 cases. They found 28 published reports of, um, of cancers um, after, immediately after mass vaccination. And basically, out of those 28, 26 of them were in, uh, in either blood or, or uh, lymph tissues. So they refer to them as... Um, he hemato lymphoma cancers so basically uh, affecting either your your lymph lymph nodes lymph liquid and or blood and two of them were solid tumors um, of these 20 26 affecting blood and and lymph tissues um i think um, something like nine of them were specifically affecting b cells 11 were affecting uh, T cells. Um, additional, I think it was six that were affecting myeloid line. So basically, um, cell lined that is a precursor to formation of blood. And, um, and uh, two more were, like I mentioned, in solid, solid. Again, out of all of those 28, four were in, uh, in the actual injection site, including one of those solid tumor ones. So that's, that's also pretty interesting uh one more thing to mention is that most of the these are either lymphomas or leukemias that are being observed and uh basically the difference here is that oh it started to snow <laughs> great um basically the difference is is the origin right so uh, leukemia will uh, originate in a bone marrow versus lymphoma will originate in in lymph nodes, but same cell lines could be targeted either way. Um, so, and the reason why that was of interest to me is because we recently published a paper review where I'm the lead author suggesting that IgG4 antibodies could be contributing to cancer as well in their own right. And based on historical studies of people with diseases that have elevated IgG4 levels, we mentioned that that uh, leukemias could be like the signature cancers that uh, that need to be uh, looked for. So we're talking about specifically, yeah, these type of cell lines being affected. So so there is clearly some uh, background information. This is probably the best review I've seen summarizing all of this, which is why I wanted to bring this to your attention. But how the authors um, finalized this was basically giving us suggestions as to what might be causing all of these why are we seeing cancers um, 
after vaccination. And by the way, some of these show up in very quick, like within few days after after um, vaccination. So very rapid onset. Most of them are, are de novo. And that means basically they there was never a history of any kind. There was no prior cancer. It just shows up out of nowhere type of thing. And uh, so you can see that there's definitely this suggests that there could be some sort of a causative effect. So now let's talk about the potential causes that the authors proposed, because this was uh, very, very fascinating as well. So number one, they're talking about the potential of uh, vaccines inducing these molecules called PD-1 on or PDL one on the surface of uh, immune cells. We these stand PD one stands for programmed death one. I talked about this um, extensively now in multiple videos. But basically, when you have these molecules on the surface of your of your immune cells, it signals these molecules basically to no longer work as effectively. So they're going to be shut off. This is part of what is referred to this the um, induction of this of the this concept of called T cell exhaustion. So check out some of the past videos where I've talked about this already as well. And I went deeply into this topic in my turbo cancer videos as well. All right. So that was um, the first one. The second one was the possibility of the spike protein of interacting with tumor suppressor proteins. So proteins in our body, in our cells that normally are supposed to make sure that cancers do not develop. Hence, the, the tumor suppressor. So P53 protein is one of them. BRCA1 is another one or BRCA2. So these are important proteins in our body that work in such a way to make sure that cancers do not develop. And apparently spike protein, there, there is now some supporting evidence that spike protein could be interacting with these proteins and perhaps limiting their proper function. Okay, So there is that element as well. Number three is um, that mRNA vaccinations interferes with proper signaling of this important molecule called interference. So interference signaling is suppressed. Again, I went into great deep detail um, about this topic in one of my videos where I reviewed how the genetic makeup of vaccines could be leading uh, to cancer. So please check that out as well. So then next one th that they mentioned that I've never discussed yet was this really interesting concept that binding of the spike protein to the ACE2 receptor can actually trigger cells that have this interaction into certain type of cells into producing this compound con called transformation growth factor and this molecule this transformation growth factor as its name suggests it can induce cells to transform into something else so these cells that actually say are triggered by this molecule can regress in their state so from whatever they are already as a mature developed cell they can regress almost like backwards in their development and to a type of state of cell that would have been seen earlier in the embryonic development. And such cells are now have the capacity, for example, to um, grow into, to develop into something else and to metastasize. So this could help, for example, create that uh, dangerous negative environment towards cancer um, development, all right? Number five is uh, DNA contamination. Remember, there's now some Mm, emerging, say, rumors that uh, that the mRNA vaccines, both MR, both Moderna and Pfizer, were contaminated with with bacterioplasmid DNA, and and while there's still no deep scientific investigation of this that I'm aware of in terms of published literature, this suggests that perhaps such DNA contamination could be contributing to to cancer development if such fragments were to insert into our the genome of our cells in an incorrect place, for example, in, in a place where the genetic code is supposed to code for those tumor suppressor proteins, well, if you disrupt that code and you destroy production of such proteins, again, you could be, you could be inducing cancer development. All right, so number six was the IgG4 antibodies. Of course, that's my baby. And recently I 
I um, did a video of my own review on how IgG4 antibodies could be inducing uh, cancer development. So please check that out. And finally, number seven is frame shifting. I also did a video on frame shifting. This is the idea where because of the genetic content of these vaccines, how the mRNA is supposed to be translated, meaning decoded by the machinery inside the cell to produce a protein of interest, in this case, of course, the protein of interest being the spike protein, that can be slipped up and you don't produce spike protein, you produce something completely else, some gibberish protein, and that could actually cause problems in terms of how information is then being um, interpreted. So I thought this was a really cool way to, to give you a great summary of, uh, of basically what might be happening with, with, with cancers uh, post-mRNA uh, vaccination. Uh, and, if they, and it's also one of the first papers that actually talked about like that, look, we have a lot of anecdotal evidence suggesting that uh, cancers, especially turbo cancers, are being seen all over the world. And that's not really properly documented scientifically. So it was nice to actually see some scientific paper at least acknowledging that this, at least these rumors do exist and that these uh, oncologists all over the world are, are discussing this, but really we don't have a very solid yet scientific evidence. So this is at least potentially a start of this trend where we're finally going to be documenting this information in an appropriate manner. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up right here and uh, I'm just going to mention that uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please hit that like button. Please leave a comment what you think and, and uh, what uh, kind of content uh, you're interested in. And also please check out our Patreon account as well where we produce additional content that does not make it to the YouTube video. And uh, wow, this might be the last snowfall I'm gonna, going to film this year, but who knows? <laughs> Bye everyone.